Hello and welcome to today's Home Designer Landscaping Webinar. My name is Bailey and I'll be presenting for you today. We have four products in our Home Designer software line. I'll be using Home Designer Professional for today's design. Most of what I'll be designing can be done in suite and architectural and I'll try to point out the features that are specific to Home Designer Pro. In this demonstration we're going to be building a terrain adding terrain elevations, building a fence, driveway, and sidewalk, creating a deck, making a swimming pool, adding plants and trees, and then finally placing outdoor furniture and accessories. Let's get started by opening up the Home Designer Professional software. As a quick review, you can see our top menu bar and toolbar icons. You can access all of the tools through the top menu bar and then we have the toolbar icons for quick access. When you click on a parent tool, like the exterior wall tool, then its child tool palette with similar tools will appear here on the left hand side. You can also click on the down arrow next to the tool to see the child tools as well. And let's take a quick look at our library browser. You can open up the library browser by clicking on the icon that looks like three books or you can also access it by clicking View and then Library Browser. With the Library Browser, you can browse through different materials and items to customize your design. If you don't see any folders underneath your Home Designer Core catalogs, then you'll just need to click on Library Install Core Content, and that will allow you to download the catalog items for your software program. For now, I'll just exit out to give us some more room. Let's take a 3D camera view of this plan so we can see our design in 3D. We can do that by going up to the little icon that looks like a camera and then selecting full camera. I'm going to zoom out a bit and then you can click and drag where you want that camera to look. And just to briefly explain the 3D navigation, you can scroll with your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. You can click, hold, and drag to rotate about the camera's focal point. You can click and hold down your scroll wheel to pan. And if you press your space bar, that will release whichever tool you're using. So you can go back to your select objects tool. I'll be using those navigation tools pretty frequently. I'd also like to tile my view so I can see both the 2D floor plan and then the 3D view at the same time. Now you can do this by clicking and then dragging the tab over where you'd like it to be. You can also do this by going to window and then tile vertically. Most of the tools that I'll be using today um, will be terrain tools. And you can find all of those tools under this top terrain menu option. However, you can see that these tools are currently grayed out and that's because we need to create a terrain perimeter first. I'll zoom out a bit so that we can see this a little bit better. Let's change the size of our terrain perimeter and we can do that either by using these edit handles or we can also use the temporary dimensions. I would like to the width of my perimeter to be 110 feet and 7 inches. Now we can see that that is reflected in the 3D view as well. Let's do the length. I would like that to be 159 feet and 1 inch. To place the house more precisely on the lot we can use our dimensioning tools and you'll find that up here. Looks like a ruler. I'll be wanting to use the end-to-end -end dimension tool. So I'm going to take the dimension from the right side of the terrain all the way to the house and then also from the garage to the front. I know that I want the distance between the garage and the front of my property to be 48 feet and 11 and a half inches. Before I press enter, we're going to look over here. Um, 
this shows us what's going to be changing. Um, this one is moving both ends and we don't want that because we've already dimensioned our property. I'm going to choose the move object tool so that it actually shifts back um, the terrain or moves the house forwards. And now I'm going to press enter. We're going to do the same thing for this side. The right side of the house to the perimeter is going to be 28 feet and eight and a half inches. Change it to move object and then press enter. Now that we have our house positioned properly on our lot, I can delete these dimensions here. We can also show our terrain's perimeters, lengths, and angles. You can do that by selecting your perimeter, opening up its specification dialog, go to line style, and then for display options you can check show length and show angle. And this feature is only available in Home Designer Pro. And it's a bit small, but if we zoom in you can see that we have the angle as well as the length of our perimeter information. If you have a curved lot, we can also change our lines to arcs. You can do that by selecting one of the lines and then going down to the bottom toolbar and choosing change line slash arc. And you can still further edit the shape of your terrain perimeter this way as well. And you can change the arc by using this triangle edit handle or you can actually open up the angles specification itself and you can go to selected arc and you can change the radius if you would like. And you can be even more precise with your terrain if you have uh, survey information, terrain data, or GPS data. Now let's create a setback for our property. And this can be done in Home Designer Suite and Architectural using CAD lines and boxes, but there's actually a shortcut in Home Designer Pro. And we can start that by going to Edit and then Preferences. And preferences are personal preferences that change how the software program functions globally. They will remain until you change them again. So for what we're doing, we're going to go to Edit, Behaviors, and for the edit type, we're going to change this to concentric, and we're going to make the jump 10 feet. As you can see, now there's a little icon that lets us know that that concentric jump is active. Let's select our terrain perimeter. We're going to do a copy and paste in place. Now we're not actually making a copy of our terrain. The software knows that we only need one terrain for our plan. This copy and paste terrain perimeter changes it to a CAD polyline and we will use that to note our setback. And then I'm going to pull inwards on one of the edit handles. With that still selected, I'm going to open up its specifications. Under line style, I'm going to change the color to a lighter gray. And then I'm going to also, also make the line a dashed line. And let's go back into our preferences to just make sure that um, that behavior is set back to default. As a reminder, here's an image of what we want our plan to look like for the front yard and then the backyard. You can see that we have a bit of slope in our terrain, so that's what we're going to do next. We're going to add in our terrain elevations. With the Elevation Region tool, we can specify the difference in heights for our property in order to create those hills and valleys. So let's make three Elevation Regions by going up to Terrain, Elevation Data, and then Elevation Region. And then you can just click and drag out boxes. Um, I'm going to be doing um, three different Elevation Regions here. I'm just going to click and drag. As you can see, our terrain is changing in our 3D view. Let's control this a little bit more. And as an example, let's just have the middle region be zero for now. And if the back of your property has a difference of five feet, then you can just do negative five, and then that will be reflected here. 
or you can also enter in the height above sea level. Uh, we're in, located in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and our elevation above sea level is around 2,200 feet. So I can enter in that in here as well, and it looks weird right now, but let's enter in the rest of our information. So the back of my property is going to be 2,195 feet, and then the front is going to be 2,195.83 feet. That looks better. We can also shape these elevation regions um, by using these edit tools down here. I'm going to actually break this bottom line and I am going to pull this side down a bit and I'm going to pull this off to the side. So you obviously you can get very um, very specific with the shape of your elevation regions. And we can also use our dimensioning tools to place them more accurately as well. So I'm going to take our end-to-end -end dimension again. I'm going to make three measurements like that. And for this region, I want the dimension between the front of the property to be uh, 34 feet, two and a half inches. And for this region, also going to change it. It's going to be 26 feet and seven and a half inches. And last one, 21 feet, 10 and a half inches. And if you have any trouble seeing these changes reflected in your 3D view, you can always go up to terrain and then build terrain again. I'll just delete these dimensions. We don't need them anymore. I'm also going to make a change in this middle region here. I'm going to change it to interpolate tangent to edge, and that just makes the transition a bit smoother. Next thing we're going to do is build a fence. So we can go up to build, fencing, straight fencing. We can just click and drag to where you want that to be. Let's zoom in in our 3D view so we can see it a little bit better. I'm going to open up this fences specification dialog underneath newels and ballisters. I'm going to change the height for both railings and the posts to be six feet. I'd also like to change the style of my fence and I can search for those different styles in the library browser. I'm looking for a dog ear fence. And then just apply it to your fence. I'd also like to change the color of my fence to the same color as the white on the house here. We can do that by using the eyedropper tool. I can click on the eyedropper, choose which color I would like to use from the house, and then the material painter will let us know that we have successfully selected a color. You can see that we have some different scoping options like object mode, plan mode. I'll keep it on component mode for now. And we also have this blending tool and this blend slash replace tool allows us to either blend the color and the texture together or to replace the entire material completely. So let's use the, the blending mode real quick just to see what it does. And you can see that there's still some wood grain texture along with our white material. Now let me undo that real quick and I'll choose our same color and then I will remove the blending mode and just apply. So now you can see that there's no wood grain texture anymore since we just completely replaced the material. We can also add a gate here. In the options we have below, we can show it open. We can also change the swing side of the gate as well as where the hinges are. Let's match the material real quick. Now we can draw the rest of our gate.
and on the edge of our fence tool we actually have a diamond and we can just continue on where we left off. This diamond edit handle that allows us to just continue on with the same type of uh, fence um, is also only available in Home Designer Pro. And we can also copy and paste our gate to the other side so we have two gates. Now let's make our road and our sidewalk. So let's go up to terrain, road and sidewalk, straight road, and we can just click and drag. Pretty similar for our sidewalk. Go to terrain, road and sidewalk, straight sidewalk, same thing, click and drag. And we can adjust the placement. Now let's make a road and sidewalk. I'll position this a little bit better so we can see. And let's make our driveway by going up to terrain, road and sidewalk, driveway area. And you can just click and drag out a square. Let's open up our concrete and we're gonna make the thickness to be four inches. We can also shape our driveway so we can have a little pathway going to the front door. We can do that using these um, tools in the bottom toolbar here. I'm going to use the break line tool. I'm going to make two little breaks. That gives us an extra edit handle to pull. And I'm going to use the break line tool again just to finish off that pathway. As you can see, as I'm pulling out our driveway paths, there are red snapping indicators that let you know when you've reached another object. And that visual indicator the, for the red snapping is only available in Home Designer Pro. We can also add curves to our pathways just so it's not such a sharp 90 degree angle here. And we can do that by using, again, the bottom toolbar. Um, we have a fillet line tool, which you first select the, the line that you want to curve. Select the tool, and you can define the radius that you would like it to be. I want it to be 20 inches, so I'll press OK. And then I'll choose the other line that I want it to curve. And as you can see, now it's more of a, um, a smoother transition. So again, you just select one of the lines that you want to start the curve, select the tool, make sure it's the correct radius you want, and then you select the other line. And here's the image of our front yard that we're wanting to create. So we're going to do the stairs next. And to create the stairs, I'm going to need to go down to level 0. And right now you can see we're on level 1. So I'm just going to click down. From here, um, I'll also need to turn on my reference display so I can see where I need to place my stairs. And we can do that by going up to Tools, Reference Floors, Reference Floor Display. As you can see, we can't see our pathway yet in our reference layer. So I'm going to turn those on. We can go up to Tools, Reference Floors, Reference Floor Display Options. Now I'm going to search for our roads and sidewalks. So under R, we're going to turn on the display for our roads and sidewalks, as well as the roads. And we also want to check off terrain features. I'm going to zoom in a bit. I forgot one. We'll also need to have the terrain elevation uh, features as well. So let's make sure that that's checked in our reference display option. Now we can see. Now we can make our stairs. We can do that by going up to the Draw Stairs tool and just to make sure that it's centered for my doorway and then you can just click and drag 
And you can adjust the width of your stairs as well to however you want it to be. I'm also going to open up the stairs specification dialog. And I know that I need my length of the stairs to be 66 inches so that it fits properly. If you need to make any adjustments to make sure that your stairs are accurately placed for your plan, then you also have uh, the manual measurements available as well. Underneath style, I'm also going to uncheck open risers and I want to remove the tread. So I'm going to make both of the tread measurements zero. And let's match our materials as well. Then I'm just going to grab the material from the doorknob and apply it to the railing. And we can go back up to level one again in our plan. And we can also make sure that our pathway matches up with our stairs. For the next part of our design, we're going to be creating a deck in the backyard. And here is an image for what we're looking for. So we're going to be creating a deck and then also a little pergola on top as well. Before I get started, I'm just going to turn off our reference display layer in our plan view. We can go up to Tools, Reference Floors, Reference Floor Display. Let's start by going up to the Straight Deck Railing tool and we're just going to click and drag just as if it was another type of wall. It'll show up in our 3D view. Now we can dimension our deck as well by choosing the side that we would like to move. And I would like the length to be 31 feet and one and a half inches. And then I would like the width to be 10 feet and three inches. And let's make some stairs coming off of our deck. Just choose the draw stairs tool and you'll see that snap indicator. You can just click and then the software will know how many stairs to place in order to touch the terrain. Let's open up our stairs specification. Go to style, uncheck open risers. And for our railing, the outer railing, we're going to open up the specification for that one as well. Underneath rail style, I'm going to choose post to beam. Underneath knolls and ballisters, I'm going to change the width of our posts to be 5 inches. And for the type, you can browse out different types of millwork that you would like to use. Or you can search. I'm looking for a bowed rectangular column. And let's take another look at our deck that we're wanting to create. Now we're going to make the top beams of our pergola. I'll be using manual framing tools to build this. And manual framing tools are only available in Home Designer Pro. Let's go up to Build, Framing, General Framing, and I am going to click and drag out our board. I'm going to open up that General Framing member to see its specifications. And I know how high my pergola is going to be, so I'm going to lock the depth of my board, and I'm going to change the height to be 109 and 1 8 inch. Now I can just center my beam for where I need it to be. Now I'm going to copy that board that I created all the way across and multiply it across the entire pergola. And to do that I'm going to be using the transform replicate tool which is only available in Home Designer Pro. So I'm going to select my board choose the Transform Replicate Object tool. I'm going to be making 21 copies and I'm going to be moving it in the X delta position by 1 foot and 6 inches and the X delta direction is left and right in our plan view 
y delta is up and down in our plan view, and then z delta is our depth in our third dimension. Now I'm going to copy and paste one of our framing members to be up against the house. And real quick, let's match our materials as well. So I'm going to use the eyedropper tool again. I'm going to use the room mode, change the parts of our pergola that we would like. Let's take another look at our backyard design. So next we're going to build our swimming pool. So we're first going to go to Terrain, Feature, Rectangular Feature, and we can just click and drag in our plan. This will end up being our pool, and you can shape it however you'd like. Um, again, you can use the break line tool like we did before with our pathways, and you can also change those lines to arcs. Our swimming pool is pretty curvy, so I'll do this real quick here. And then you can change uh, the direction of these arcs by clicking on the triangle handle, like so. Now let's open up the object specification for this. And we want our pool to be 36 inches deep, so I'm going to change the height to negative 36 inches underneath the materials. I'm going to search for the stormy sky. We're going to do a copy and paste in place, and then we're going to open that object. This is going to be our water, so we're going to make this negative 6 inches, and then we're going to make it a thickness of 30 inches. So these together will fill up the pool since the pool is 36 inches deep. Underneath the materials, I'm going to go and change this to a water material. Now we can make a patio around our pool and a pathway to the deck. Let's go back up to terrain, road and sidewalk, driveway area. Just going to make a square around our pool. And then we can use the break line tool to create the little pathway to our deck. And again, feel free to use any of the curving tools or the line to arc tools to get a better shape for your patio. I'm going to open up our concrete patio. I'm going to change the thickness to 4 and so that we can see our pool I'm going to check clip overlapping terrain features. Taking a look at our image again, let's add some outdoor furniture and accessories. So let's open up our library browser and within the Home Designer Core Catalogs, let's go to Exteriors, Outdoor Living, Outdoor Cooking, Grills, Gas, and I'm going to choose the Barbecue Grill. And I can just place it in my plan like so. And for some furniture, we can go under Outdoor Furniture, Furniture Sets, Wicker, and I'm going to choose this lounge chair here, and I'm going to have two of them, and I can place them in my plan where I want them to be. Let's also put a little side table. And if we like a particular arrangement of items, we can select all of them together and create an architectural block. An architectural block can be done in Home Designer Architectural and Pro, which allows you to group select objects and you can move their position as a single unit. 
and we can save this architectural block of items to our user library for future use. The user library holds items you've created or selected out and may want to use it again in future plans. There are additional accessories and manufacturer content also available for download on our website. For the sake of time, I've already made an architectural block for the rest of my outdoor accessories. You can also explode the architectural block so that you can move pieces individually as well. Now let's make a garden bed in the front yard. We can go to Terrain, Garden Bed, Polyline Garden Bed, and just drag out a square. And just like our other tools, we can shape this with our break line tools. We can also make a curb around our garden bed by going up to Terrain, Terrain Wall and Curb, Straight Terrain Curb. And I can just trace right over the lines that we have. If you browse through any of these folders in the library browser, you can see that there are a wide variety of plants to choose from. For choosing the types of plants that will grow best in your location, we have a plant chooser tool to make it easy. We can do that by going up to Terrain, Plant, Plant Chooser. You can search using any or all of the options in this dialog box, including common scientific names, flower or leaf color, bloom time, hardiness zone, and more. Let's view the hardiness zone map. We're located in the northern part of Idaho, so our zone number is around five or six. So let's enter in five to six. We're gonna search for a tree, deciduous tree, tolerates wet soil, and then search. Let's look at the common names. I would like to use the Montepler maple for the front yard. And we can just click in our plan where we want that to be. Let's open the plant chooser tool again. And if I want to just search for a particular type of tree, such as sycamore, I can choose plants that way as well. I'm going to put that in our backyard. And again, for the sake of time, I've made architectural blocks for the rest of my plants. So I'll drop those in here. Again, you can explode the architectural block so that you can adjust the individual items a little bit more precisely. And it looks like everything's in place. To finish up our design, we can add in a backdrop. And you can import your own images to use as a backdrop for your design, but there are many options to choose from in the library browser too. So within the core catalog, we can look under backdrops, land, flat. We can see that there are many different options. I'm gonna choose the grassy one. And then you can just click in your background. We can also turn on the shadows for our plan as well by going up to Edit, Default Settings, Camera Tools, Full Camera. And then underneath our General Camera defaults, we're going to turn on the show shadows and the reflections. And then let's make a new camera real quick. There we go. Now we have our shadows turned on. We can also adjust the sun angle um, by going up to the tool that looks like a light bulb and then adjust sunlight. And then you can kind of toggle these for seeing how your house will look at different times of the day. We also have different rendering techniques as well. We're using standard at the moment but you can use a vector view, glass house, 
technical illustration, and watercolor. I hope you enjoyed our landscaping webinar today. If you'd like to try out any of our home designer software programs, we offer free trial versions on our website. We also have our 30-day money-back satisfaction guarantee on any new home designer software purchase, as well as upgrade purchases. If you already own a home designer software program and would like to upgrade to a newer or more powerful program, then you can qualify for an upgrade discount. And to help with learning home designer software, we have many training videos and help articles available on our website. We also have our Home Talk user forum if you'd like to ask questions or get in contact with other home designer software users. If you ever need help choosing which software product is best for your needs, feel free to give our sales department a call or send us an email. We're happy to help out. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a good day.